Let's assume you have one acre piece of land that has been partitioned into four halves. The first part of your land contains your own house, which is not a revenue source or not a source of income, and you cannot make money from it. In space two, you rent a building to someone and earn money from it. The third and fourth spaces remain unsold. So for these unsold spaces, you will find a mediator and engage his assistants in selling them. You will start earning more money after these are sold as well. Let's compare these land spaces with publisher ad inventory. From publisher websites, let's say that out of three ad spaces that are ready to offer, only one ad space is sold. Similar to land space we described, the publisher needed a mediator to help them to sell the remaining two ad spaces. Ad network acts as a mediator here. Welcome to ad network series. In this video, I'm going to share about ad networks its role in the display advertising ecosystem. First, I will show you how to differentiate ad inventory based on various factors. Second, I will share what is ad network and its role in the ecosystem. Third, you will understand ad networks based on size and tools used. Fourth, I will explain challenges and solutions with ad networks. Finally, we will look at how ad exchange came into picture. In this video, we are going to look at first part of ad networks, which covers types of ad inventory. Before we jump into ad networks main topic, it is important to know types of ad inventory. Let's start with a real world scenario. Let's assume I'm a farmer. I'm ready to sell some apples. I work as supplier on the supply side of the business. On the other hand, consumers or buyers who are on the demand side demand the product. I will supply apples to them. When there is a situation in which supply exceeds demand, when supply increases while demand decreases. Apples for example, if not sold, it goes as waste. In other case, where supply is low and demand is high, scarcity of product arises among the consumers. All this can happen anytime in any marketplace. It is critical and important to maintain a demand and supply ratio that meets the need of both suppliers and buyers. Let's assume the number of apples ready to sell is 100. Out of total number of apples, in one case, 70% of apples were sold, leaving 30% unsold. For sold apples, farmer gets value for every apples they sell. For unsold apples, those are considered as waste if they are not sold to anyone. We can refer to the apples that have been sold as premium apples. Unsold apples can be referred as remnant. From the example we discussed, let's see how much money a farmer makes. Premium apples are 70% of 100 apples. 70% means 70 apples are sold as premium and each at $5 let's assume. So total money earned by farmer is 5 into 70 is $350. Remnant apples are unsold is 30% and it's loss for him if it is still no one is ready to purchase. They try to sell at least for less price than premium. Let's say apple is sold at $2. So total money earned by farmer is $2 into 30 is $60. I divided this into three cases to understand how much money does farmer earns in each case. Case 1. If all apples sold at premium price, total money earned is 5 into 100 is $500. In case 2, 70% of apples are sold at premium price and 30% at remnant. For premium, 5 into 70 is $350. For remnant, it is 2 into 30 is $60. Total money earned in this case, 350 plus 60 is $410. In case 3, let's assume 70% of apples are sold at premium price and remaining are wasted because they were unsold. Revenue from premium, 5 into 70 is 350 and from remnant, it is 0. So total money earned in this case is 350 into 0 is 350. For the same 100 apples, the farmer receives different amounts in these 3 cases. 500, 410 and 350 dollars. 
If farmer can get good price for all the apples, he will make more money. If not, he looks for another alternative to sell inventory. Because something is better than nothing. Instead of wasting money, make some money by selling to those who are interested. Even here, the mediator is required to run the business in an effective way on both sides of the ecosystem. Let's apply same concept for ad inventory. Let's assume you are a publisher manages a website with a number of different category pages and each page gets millions of monthly impressions. In this example, 2 million for home page, 1 million for entertainment, 1 million for politics and so on. To sum up, total ad inventory generated per month through this website is 10 million impressions. Once this inventory is ready, your sales team approaches advertisers with all of the information they need to make a sale and they strike a deal. Each ad space is defined with a rate and offers to advertisers. On the other end, buyers also have their own rates which are the maximum amounts for which they are willing to run a campaign. Advertisers with their own rates can be seen on this slide. You as a publisher can strike a deal with advertiser who is willing to pay a higher price than others and this allows you to earn more money. From these advertisers, it's clear that advertiser with a $5 CPM is the highest paying one and you can choose him. In terms of amount of ad inventory, the total inventory available for the ad space is 1 million impressions. You may see different scenarios depending on how many impressions advertisers buy at different times. Let's have a look at three different scenarios to see what we are talking about. For example, a single advertiser, Nike is prepared to purchase all 1 million impressions available for this ad space and all inventory has now been sold. In case 2, Nike this time willing to purchase only 5 lakh impressions. The remaining 5 lakh are sold to new advertisers go down. Even in this case, all of the impressions were sold. Case 3, Nike purchased only 5 lakh impressions. Skoda is willing to buy 3 lakh impression this time. Now in this situation, out of 10 lakhs impression, only 2 lakhs left over impressions. Similarly, you sold other ad spaces to other advertisers according to the inventory required for them. And you may still have some unsold inventory. Based on the concepts we discussed till now, we shall look into different types of inventory. A publisher is ready to sell 10 million impressions. Depending on the market value and demand, there are two types of inventory. First is sold inventory, in which a certain percentage of the inventory is sold to advertising. Another type of ad inventory is unsold, which explains that the leftover impressions not purchased by anyone. Here, premium inventory refers to inventory that has been sold and remnant inventory refers to unsold inventories. Do you think both premium and remnant offer same value to advertisers? Let's find which is the best. Let's start by learning more about premium inventory. Premium means exclusive, top-end, high-end, superior, deluxe, high-quality, prime, etc. Premium inventory is a term used to describe sold inventory, as if they were sold apples. It is a pre-booked inventory that will deliver a predetermined amount of impressions as a part of direct premium deal between the advertiser and the publisher. They are sold at premium price or high price because they are and in high demand compared to other inventory. When demand is strong, so is the price. Premium inventory is ideal expectation of any publisher to make a deal with. You can use Google Analytics to see how much inventory was available in the past and keep the hope that they would deliver this month as well. This inventory which is ready, you agree to sell it to the client and if the total number of impression is booked, the inventory is sold. Let me explain what remnant inventory. Remnant inventory is also known as leftover inventory. Other terms for remnant is rest, scrap, leftovers, etc. Like unsold apples, it's unsold inventory. After premium deals between publisher and advertiser, it's a leftover inventory from total inventory. This remnant inventory is sold for lower price than premium since there are less demand for remnant and hence it costs less in the market. We can say it as undesirable situation of any publisher. 
when publisher is expected to deliver 100k impressions only 70k impressions were sold and 30 were unsold these 70k impressions are sold inventory and remaining 30k is referred to as remnant inventory finally to conclude if a publisher can secure good price for all the available ad inventory he will make more money if not he looks for something alternative to sell whatever left over something is better than nothing any product is waste once life span is over instead of wasting unsold inventory make some money by selling to those such as mediator and display advertising ecosystem those mediators are ad networks these ad networks acts as intermediary between advertisers and publishers to sell and buy ad inventory i hope you understand the distinction between premium and remnant inventory for any queries and feedback feel free to reach out to learner search global at the rate of gmail.com you may also mention it in the comments area take care stay safe and stay tuned for our next video